yes. create something uh, and, and, and in fact in fact the, the ultra low freak we actually hired our the sound engineers for Metallica is a company called uh, uh, Myers Sound and we actually hired them to assist in the study of the of the sonic enhancement and we literally the idea is get the get the frequency low enough that it causes the molecules at the surface between the barrel and the wood to vibrate both the wood and the alcohol and so so mostly caramel because the caramel extract is right below the char and so this isn't about about speeding up aging because we're not talking about deep penetration we're talking about surface penetration so it's just about pulling out extra karma from you. So, so it was a theory, and I needed to study it first. And so we actually spent the money to study the concept and were able and have the science behind it to prove that it does in fact enhance the whiskey. And so we've got a patent pending process now. And as soon as the patent's cleared, we'll start publishing scientific papers on it. Um, because we want people to know this isn't just doofus marketing. Yeah, we're not just playing music to make the barrels feel happy. You know? I want to shake their butts, right? And uh, yeah, that's Metallica style. Um, except once it gets to the black Spanish brandy barrels. And the black Spanish brandy barrels, we have two different sizes. We've got 200 liter barrels and 300 liter barrels. So we do. We use a mixture of both. Frankly, because we just took what we could get, and I just, just I, you know, my source just said, "What do you want?" And I said, "Everything you can stuff in a container, please." <laughs> and, uh, um, in in this particular project, or in, so I've been making whiskey for 30 years. You came from Jim Beam, right? From no. Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark. Okay. Right. So I was a master thrower at Maker's Mark for 14 years. Um, I founded Whistle Pig. Um, um, I've built about 50 distilleries, um, including the one in Baraboo, Wisconsin, uh, the Driftless Climb Distillery. Uh, so, um, I've got my hand in a lot of pots. So how did you end up here at Mike's? So I'm just borrowing the space here. Um, literally, this, this whiskey is not home here. Right. I'm just sharing the whiskey here because this is a great space. Yeah. And a, and a good opportunity for us to to share with a lot of people. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So I don't know if anybody said before, but can you like uh, just tell tell sure. everybody a little bit so, about like the age? And so all here's the concept. Metallica commissioned me to make the list, and 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 I, I love that word because. It's like one artist to another. They didn't meddle. They just said, make a really cool whiskey for us. Sure. And, and then they took their hands off. And I said, great, but you're going to have to bless it before we release it. Because if you don't like it, I can always tweak it. Right. And uh, so I decided I want the whiskey in the bottle to be a representation of the band itself. So I studied the band and the ethos of the band and came up with three, three conclusions. Number one they're collaborative they they work together as a team all the way down to they've agreed that they won't that it's either all sign or no sign on the bottom um, it's a team number two is they think outside of the box they do things a little different um, and number three they've got this process they refer to as metallicizing where it's take something that's already nice and kick it up a couple notches so having you need to meet James. He's so, a, he is a huge car guy. He's got an old Lincoln Zephyr that is just gorgeous. Yeah. But so I took those three things and said, great. Now how did I translate that? So from a collaboration standpoint, I started going around to distilleries all over North America and kind of networking and saying I want this whiskey and I want that whiskey and I want this whiskey and I want that whiskey. And, and got whiskeys that in their own right would be tasty enough to warrant just bottling independently. And but from all over North America, from Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Canada, everywhere. And then I married them together because you got to think outside the box and you got to be collaborative. So you truly and, together other companies with Yes, that's correct. Because it's a collaboration. Yeah. Then, I had to kick it up a couple notches. So we put it into black Spanish brandy barrels to finish it. 
and then we hit it with ultra low frequency noise that we call black noise. We've actually done the science behind it, so it's not just making the barrels feel happy. It's, it's, it actually it, happens to it, be a Metallica song, it, though, and, too. And it's just, and Metallica music plays well at ultra low frequencies. And so the idea is, it's not about the level of the sound, it's about the frequency of the sound. And so it's to get the molecules of the wood and the alcohol at the interface to, to vibrate. And that'll cause interaction. It's, this is not about, it's not about fast aging. We're not talking deep penetration, we're talking surface movement. And it just happens that the caramel layer in a wood barrel is right below the chart. So I can get enough movement to actually cause the color to change to the naked eye in, in a relatively short period of time. How long is it going to be now? So the process, all, of, uh, all I'll say is this, this patent pending, all of my finishes are two to 10 weeks long. So it will be between two and 10 weeks. Um, and the idea is you're gonna get some nice warm spiciness, but not too much, a little corn sweetness, a nice hit of caramel, butterscotch, and vanilla, and then an overtone of, of dehydrated fruit, particularly apricot. Um, real easy to drink. Yes, I have. I have. Long, I have short to midterm contracts, and as soon as we get the launch done, and, and take a breath or two will go to long-term contracts. Um, so the idea is always to, to marry these together. We're, we're going to have our own distillery as well, but that's more about making Halo brands, doing little short-run, really cool things. Where is that located? Um, that'll be in the Bay Area. We haven't picked the exact location. But as part of the collaboration that's extra fun, the distillery is already in existence in upstate New York. It's called Hill Rock Estate Distillery, and I'm a part owner of it. And Hill Rock is getting ready to quadruple. Today's distillery. And, and when, Hill Rock quad, when Hill Rock quadruples, we're going to take the fermenters of the mash tub, distill the receiver, and all the guts out of Hill Rock's distillery, put them on a truck, and ship them to the Bay Area, and that will become Metallica's distillery. Yeah, it's going to get a, it's going to get all brand new kit. So they're quadrupling. So so a new still, a new lauder ton, a whole bunch of new fermenters. Um, so yes, they because they're doing very successfully as well. When, when will this actually be like distributed or released? This to is the general public? already out to the general public. It came out yesterday. It was released yesterday. Okay. Um, um, the demand, frankly, according you know, I'll, just to quote George Washington. The demand has been brisk. I, I um, can't get a bottle. We literally, um, I, I was at two liquor stores today, and we completely sold three liquor stores out of out of Black and during the sign. I um, tried to buy it online, I couldn't get it. There, uh, yeah, we broke the internet yesterday. Wow. Literally, the online sales mechanism crashed because there were so many people that tried to get bought. So, with that being said, how many cases are we talking? Like, what was the? Um, I, I, I am. I, 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 I generally don't release individual case okay, numbers. Okay. Um, it was a fun amount. Okay. Um, it was a surprising okay. amount. They and, got a lot uh, of followers. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, Nails. What's that? Nails still has some. Yeah, um, both stores. Um, so if you're, if you're short, guys, you can get that. Can I have a bottle? Um, yes, you may. Thank you. But uh, um, so that? that's that's the concept behind black. Um, you want to sign underneath it? I can do that. There you go. I usually sign over I'm here. I'm gonna add that to my collection of Metallica gear. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Very good. No. Do you like it? It is good. I like the aroma. I like all the finishes on it. Is it from the distilleries you started, or is it from other places that? Um, it's from all over the place. I didn't limit myself just to my own distillery. Um, Can I get a little bit more? Yes, you may. Let's see. We have some newbies that need drinks.
please. There were a lot of people that were seeing it out here that they uh, were trying to get it yesterday. They couldn't get it either. So apparently it's a uh, very high demand. It is. The demand is unbelievable. I'm really thankful. That process is very interesting. Going through that that process. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm very appreciative that the band will give me full poetic license to just do what I think needs to be done to make something cool and interesting. Well, it helps for you to have a track record the way you do too, so, you know. You want to tell somebody you need more glasses or no? There's more glasses right behind you. Oh, he's on top of it. Thank you. You rock. And may I donate a couple that are dirty? Okay. I can take those. Okay. Can I get a picture of the bottle real quick? Sure. So I think it's going to be a little bit. Something out here. Maybe I got like three bottles left. Well, here, I'll take you with it. <laughs> I read about it yet. Thanks. You've never heard of what before? Well, that's because we trademarked it and are patenting it. So we invented the process. So what we do is we, we take um, Metallica music and then drop its frequency so that we can get it into an ultra low frequency range. And the idea is if you get the frequency low enough, you can cause molecules to vibrate. And, uh, and I want the, specifically, I want the molecules of whiskey and wood at the interface to vibrate. Okay. And the deal is, this is not about enhance, speeding up the aging process. It does not do that. It's about enhancing. Because all it does is, when you char the barrel, right below the char, there's a, what they call a red line, which is where the wood sugar's got hot enough to caramelize, but not hot enough to burn. Okay. And it's right below the char. So if you can get the molecules at that surface to vibrate, you can pull extra caramel out of the wood. And that's all I'm looking for, is to pull some extra caramel out of the wood. And we actually have the science behind it. We've actually um, been subjecting barrels to, to ultra-low frequency sound and pulling samples every so often and measuring the color change. Okay. And, and it's definitive. Um, there's absolutely no question. And once we've got the, the patent that it's pending right now, once the patent's cleared, we'll be publishing scientific um, data um, because we want people to know this is not a cute marketing gimmick. This is honest to goodness science. Now, have you heard about people who've actually been experimenting with pressure changes in their barrel houses where they're actually increasing and decreasing pressure yeah, to force the whiskey into and out of the barrel? And, and that concept is trying, is, is attempting to, to uh, um, speed up the maturation process. Okay, so they're trying to speed and, it up is all they're trying to do. And, and honestly, I can only give them half credit because there's two phases, extraction and reaction. And while, while changing the pressure may cause extraction to happen faster, you don't speed up reactions by changing pressure. No, the chemical reactions take time. Right. You get three, it's a, a, the chemical reactions are a function of three things, time, temperature, and the concentration of the reactants. So if you extract it faster, so if, if you extract faster, you'll you'll have the reactants present. But you can't speed up time, and it's only a mild function of temperature. And if you want to if you want to raise the temperature enough to make it happen faster, you've got to raise the temperature by by you know 40, 50 degrees centigrade. And which is which is economically not feasible. Uh, so you can't really speed up reaction pressure. And I, I've tasted whiskeys that have done a you know quarter cast or smaller cast, and like what's the two-year whiskey looks like a ten-year. It doesn't taste like a ten-year. Right. So people will say it's over oaked. It's not over oaked. It's under estered. Okay. Right. It's got the right amount of oak. It just doesn't have time for the chemical reactions, yeah, and, it, and it the principal correct. reactions are are the wood acids reacting with the with the grain alcohols to form esters, and that's the floral, fruity, banana-y, berry-y kind of notes that fill out the body of the whiskey. 
that are completely missing in a in a in a, in a, in a an enhanced extraction whiskey. Right, so you, you do age it the normal time. So That's, ours is yeah, yeah ours is well aged whiskey before we put it in the barrel. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then and all we're looking to do is it's two to ten weeks, and we're just looking to to to, to pick up some caramel. That's all I'm doing. I'm enhancing. It. Is, is is that is that process is that while it's in the uh, it's in the, in the black spread it's yes yeah, in the in, well it's in the brandy okay. barrel. So it's aged the bourbon is or the whiskey is aged the bourbon and in it's bourbon. normal okay. it's a normal chart out. We had a fun fact that we were told we had to now tell you. Okay. So our wedding ring that we're making for him is Maker's Mark. Oh fun! Like, nice. I was the master filler at Maker's Mark for 14 years. Yeah. That's awesome. I like that a lot. When, when, when it's a great day. Okay. Well, congratulations in advance. Yes. Hi. You look thirsty. I am. I'm very. This time I whiskey. Yes. MSRP on... On the bottom. About 40 to 42 bucks. Is that bad? Yeah. Thank you. We want it to be approachable to all Metallica fans. Where, where Me personally or the brand? The brand. So the brand, um, our headquarters is in the Bay Area of San Francisco. Oh, okay. um, the whiskey right now is a collaborative effort. We haven't actually built our own distillery yet, so I'm just borrowing other people's stuff. Um, it just happens that I'm well connected and have a lot of other people's stuff that I can borrow. It is. You know, that's the nice thing about being an old distiller is I got a guy for everything. Have you had a sample yet? No sweat. Which, how about, let me rephrase the question. Would you like a sample? Certainly. Okay, well, this is a different thing. It's same whiskey, but a different level of experience. And and they're not mutually exclusive. So, welcome to the blackened world. So you can blacken your world. They invited me. Metallica decided they wanted to do a whiskey and they came and got me. And they asked if I would be interested in doing this. Well, I can imagine you're probably very busy and probably a lot of people reach out to you wanting to do things. So you think and choose what I, you want to do. Like, I, I, have to be, I, I have to be judicious. I actually have a, a, a personal publicist, a scheduler, who, uh, who guards my time. To keep me from overcommitting, because my 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 default is yes, and uh, and I have to learn to say I don't have time. I, I mean, I've I've had people call me up and just say we really want you to be involved, and I have to say I just don't have the time. I want to say yes, but but I'm not going to do it justice because I just don't have the time. So you probably get a lot of phone calls from uh, startups. A lot. I mean, I've built in the in the last, and I'm not saying no to everybody. Um, I've built 50 distilleries in the last 10 years. Over the current year, between expansions and new construction, I'm going to do about 14 distilleries. Yeah. Some some starting, some expanding, but I'm going to do about 14. And uh, um, just shoot me. You know, I've, I, you know, I, I literally, between now and December 22nd, I have two open days. One of them is Labor Day, which is a travel day for me, and the other one is Thanksgiving. And other than that, it's it's seven days a week. So, so what is it that that would like pique your interest from the standpoint that you would things like this, like a collaboration like this, that would get you involved? Um, so Metallica, literally, the fact that they said, make us something cool, go. Um, and, uh, and 
then allowing me to really go out of the box and throwing money at it. I mean, you know, we we did we spent a lot of money on the on the ultra low sound, uh, ultra low frequency uh, maturation, and uh, and the fact that they would empower me to do that and put the money behind making that uh, behind proving that it really does work um, was very attractive. What was it that made you want to kind of uh, like go down that path of something that's like out of the norm? You know, like I mean, you, you, I mean, with somebody with the experience like you, maybe five or ten years ago, would you have looked at this and said, "No, this is not something that will work"? Or what was oh, that made you? So, so I'm an, a, a half in jest, but I'm going to say, while I was at Makers, I was a bit repressed, and and. I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, you walked into Makers and they said, there's the bullseye right there. Don't ever move it. And all of my creative energy was focused in keeping that bullseye right there while growing the brand from 75,000 cases to 1.56 million cases. So it was a big challenge and it, and it was, it, but, uh, but all the while it's, it's yeah, but right. Yeah, but American was, but the single mall and, and, and focus on the bullseye and uh, and so when I when I left it was time to leave it was time to this allows you to explore your like uh, creative side yes you know, get, get very much done. so because I, I am a very creative person by nature and uh, and I like the concept of playing around and, and you know sometimes you know I probably you know multi-barrel aging it's one of my deals. At Hill Rock, we've got three different styles of multi-barrel aging. We've got Solera Bourbon, I've got a double cast rye, and I've got a single malt that moves through at least four barrels, including two finishes. Um, and uh, uh, between Hill Rock and Whistlepig and a couple others, I've probably got maybe 50 different kinds of finishing barrels. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're always looking for new and interesting. Um, they don't all work. Sometimes it's like, eh, why did we do that? But but even at that, we've got a process so that we don't waste the whole barrel. Um, and uh, But there's a lot of fun things that we've done that are tasty that just haven't hit the market yet because we haven't found a good place for it. Does this process um, work better than what you thought or were you a little skeptical going in or are you kind of amazed as to how the technology is um, working? I would say gut level, I, I, I mean, since my first ex exposure to ultra low frequency sound, which was way back as a cadet at West Point, um, I, was a, I, I, I was a member of the Cadet Ushers and Acolytes Society, and meaning that we passed out bulletins and, and served communion and took off offering and that kind of thing. <coughs> and uh, so I was up at the chapel one evening and it was just me and Dr. Davis, who's the church organist. And the West Point organ is one of the three largest organs in the world. And Dr. Davis was going to have to practice a little anyway. So he played Toccata and Fugue in D minor for me, a Phantom of the Opera, which is just powerful and amazing. And then it was like he was Emperor Palpatine. And he goes, and now for the full effects of the organ. And, and he played the lowest note that the organ could play. And you could feel the building shaking. And he goes, I can only play this for a number of seconds because I'll do structural damage to the building. And I'm going, that's fascinating. And it took me a long, long time to figure out what to do with it. But we figured out what to do with it. And, but I, it was never far from my head because if you've ever experienced ultra low frequency sound, you never forget it. I mean, Metallica has an ultra low frequency subwoofer that they hit while they're playing music once in a while. It's like they set off a bomb in the middle of the stage. And when it goes boom, everybody in the entire stadium can feel it in their guts. And uh, you, don't, you don't forget that kind of stuff. And, and I'm going, yes. That's what we need to do. It's a, it's a very interesting process. I mean, I know there's other companies that have kind of started it and they're like wanting to do it, but if you think of the process of, you know, 
that high frequency, that vibration moving things all over the place, constantly moving it around and in and out, touching the barrel. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's yeah, it's low frequency, frequency yeah. But but you can it's really funny. Um, you can take water in a beaker and change the frequency the, of the sound that you're hitting the beaker with, and you can cause it to jump, you can cause it to spin clockwise, you can cause it to spin counterclockwise, you can cause it to go dead calm. It's amazing what you can do with the proper frequencies. Are you a musician? Um, I'm a singer. Um, I used to sing a cappella, um, and uh, um, I took piano for a number of years. I haven't played in a while, so I, 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 I deign to call myself a pianist because I haven't played in a while. I have a baritone voice that would shake the rafters. I also have a seven octave range. I need to warm up, but I can cover Freddie Mercury. <laughs> but. But I can I can really project. I I was at an event one time, and I was literally I was it was a it was a grand opening for a bar, a little bit smaller than this, but not much. And um, I was just dropping off with the owner sitting over in the corner, or one of the owners, and 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 while she and I are talking, a camera guy comes over, lights up, and he hands her the microphone and says, "It's time for the first drawing," and she's going, uh -huh. "Excuse me." Excuse me. Um, um, excuse me. And nothing. And I looked at her and I said, "Would you like me to settle the crowd?" And she says, "Would you please?" And she hands me the microphone. And I set the microphone down and said, "I won't be needing this." And I just bellowed, "All right, everybody, settle down so we can have the first drawing." And just, and the, that noise died. And she looks at me and goes. Can you stay here all night? <laughs> you look thirsty. Oh, poor ladies. Um, may I offer you some Metallica blackened whiskey? Come here, my dear. Be critical now. Do you like a top off? When you finish the bottle, do you mind like signing that one? I would be yeah. So one question. Yes, sir. You 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 admit this this is a blended a blended whiskey. Yes. It's not a matter of a, a admitting, we're proud of it. Okay. Um, but there's no GNS in it. This is this is the rough equi This is the exact equivalent of a vatted malt in Scotland. Okay. There's, so, it's it's this is a selection of a number of straight whiskeys married together. Is is there a neutral grain spirit? No, that's Janus. There's no Janus. There's no neutral spirit at all. Okay. This this is not. This is if we were in Scotland, there would be a term for it, and it would be a vatted straight whiskey. Okay. Um, but. That's not available as a definition with the U.S. government, yeah. and so we have to call it a blend of straight whiskeys. There is, there are no neutral spirits in here at all. Um, I've had some really, really good aged neutral grain spirits. And yes, they can be. Really they can be. Whiskey. They can be. Yeah. But and and part of our goal is we want to raise the level of of awareness and uh, and deliciousness of blended whiskey yeah. and uh, um, it, it, it doesn't have to be a four letter word it's a five letter word and uh, um, and and so there's 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 we're not adulterating it with grain neutral uh, with neutral spirits of any kind it's just straight whiskey A and straight whiskey B and straight whiskey C and straight whiskey B and straight whiskey E and straight whiskey F married together is there a minimum age um, it's uh, well, you can't call it straight if it's under two. It's weighted age is seven. Thank you. We're having a lot of fun with it, and and we're we're not ashamed to call it blended whiskey. But we are having to explain to people. Yeah. If we were in Scotland, it wouldn't be called a blend. It would be called a vat. Not, not everybody is that kind. Yeah. I understand. That. And so I do have to explain it a lot.
but if we were in Scotland, this would not be called a blend. It would be called a vat, a vatted. What would be called? It would be called a vatted whiskey. So in Scotland, they have they have you have single malt, which is which is malt whiskey from one distillery. You have vatted malt whiskey, which is malt whiskey single malts from a number of distilleries married together. And then you have blended, which is single malts from a number of distilleries along with a neutral spirit. Okay. Um, they are whatever grains cheap. Um, but uh, but we aren't blended in that traditional sense. It's just there's no word in the American in the American government standards. There's no there's no analog to that in Scotch. So so we're you know we're we are a, a blend of straight whiskey. Because everything you guys do from that label is basically. You guys are telling them this is what you, this is how you can do it. This is what yes. You yeah, we have to negotiate with the feds. You know, it's like here's what's in here, and they say, well, you can say this, but then you have to say that. You can do this, but you have to do that. And your letters and, can be this high or this high. Or and yeah, they tell us how high they can be, and where it has to go on the bottom. Thank you, babe. Thank you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very prescriptive. Um, um, we get there are certain spots where you get some leeway, but uh, but they're very prescriptive about what they do. Another one. Is there another, Is there another bottle there? It's it's right in my blind spot. <laughs> it's right where I can't see it. I didn't know if that other guy brought his pen or if you had. Pardon? You're never fully dressed without a pen, sir. Thank you, sir. This one's for you. Fish Hatch Road. Dan owns. Uh, Dan runs one. His dad runs the other. I got Fish Hatchery. I don't. Um, um, are you, are you ask Dana. Donald's? Ask Dana. Donald's? No, Neil. He said Neil. Neil. But ask Dana. Um, let's see if I can get her attention here. Good luck. <laughs> okay, she's being pretty. Hello, Dana. He is an editor. Just a sec, yes. Oh, I, I just wanted. So, meals. Yeah. Where are they? I don't remember. You don't yeah. have any more. Where is the liquor store? Yeah, because because they, they want to know where to go get whiskey. Oh, look it up. Is it on Fish Hatch? I'm not sure. Because that's right on my way home. It's gonna be. It's gonna be past okay. nine o'clock by the time I leave. It's no, it's in Middleton. Meals in Middleton. Yeah. But if you want blackandwhiskey.com, we have a tracker of all the places that have gone in. So if you just go through there and call, people will still have it. I was going to go to Riley's, but I think they're out. Are they already? We didn't have a taste So there. must go? Might I might go there tomorrow. When though. I went there this morning, they had like 10 cases. And okay, they I'll... said that not many people had come in yet. I'll go to Riley's um, tomorrow. I would call, call before you go in and I don't want anyone to waste their time. We're ahead to head with the limousine okay. line. I work, I work at Cottage Grove. Pardon? I got to go to Pittsburgh. We're ahead okay. to head with the limousine ride. Yeah. Try it there and then if you don't find it there, we, we made a point Sir. of putting it all on the website. So if you don't know much about time, okay. then you plug in for your app. Nowhere near. Do not confuse this at all with the care of your process. It's, it's nothing like the care of your process. It's been crazy. Awesome. All we're doing is just hitting the barrels with ultra low frequency sound waves. And all we're trying to do, we're not trying to speed up aging at all. 
we're just we're just trying to enhance it and i can move the molecules right at the inner surface layer and that's where the that's where the caramel is so i can pull extra caramel i'm not trying to do anything else so this is nothing at all like the terracentric process um, we are not we i i do not believe that you can in fact do that I, that you can do a true 100 percent sonic aging you can do a sonic extraction and uh and we're not even doing that. All we're doing is an enhancement. We're not getting deep enough penetration to do anything more than caramel. Do you have problems with character challenging your patent or anything like that? Nope. Not at all. Uh, Just because the process is completely different. Yes. I mean, they're so smiling about what they actually do. Right. That we, we're, we're, I don't think we're going to have any problem at all. Totally different process, totally different goal. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. My pleasure. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure.